So what meaning is the art supposed to have? What's that for? Look at the raw materials the art comes from. Isn't the stone more perfect than the sculpture? Isn't the blank canvas more perfect than any painting? I think Monet said Impressionism is the spontaneous impression of nature, like throwing over the shutters in the early morning sun. Personally, I find his colours far too bold. However, his haystack at sunset does grow on one. Woman's art jargon tires me. She talks of certain pictures as growing on one. <laughs> so there's some sort of fungus. I'm not quite sure you understood me, dear. It's a double entente. <laughs> Have I ever told you the story of Henri Duplis? I don't think so. <laughs> Henri Duplis was by birth a simple man, characterized by simple needs. He has very little of life, and life has very little of him. One day, much to his surprise, a deceased relative left a small inheritance to Henri. It was not a large legacy, even from the modest standpoint of Henri Duplis, but it impelled him towards some seemingly harmless extravagances. In particular, it led him to patronize the local arts. <laughs> Signor Pincini was the most brilliant artist. Yet to be discovered, his circumstances were decidedly impoverished, and for the sum of 600 lucre, he gladly undertook to cover his client's back from the neck down to the waistline with a glowing representation of the fall of Icarus. <laughs> The design was a slight disappointment to Henri, who had suspected Icarus of being a fortress taken by Wallenstein in the Thirty Years' War. But he was more than satisfied with the execution of the work, which was acclaimed by all who had the privilege of seeing it as Pincini's masterpiece. It was Pincini's greatest effort, but his last. Without even waiting to be paid, the illustrious artist departed this life. There remained, however, the widow Pincini, to whom the 600 lucre were due, and thereupon arose a great crisis in the life of Henri Duplis. <laughs> Henri's legacy, under the stress of numerous little calls on its substance, had dwindled to a very insignificant proportions. And when a pressing wine bill and sundry other accounts had been paid, there remained little more than 430 lucre to offer the widow. The lady was properly indignant, not wholly at the loss of 170 lucre, but also at the attempt to depreciate the value of her late husband's now highly acclaimed and valuable masterpiece. I'll kill you myself! Get out of here! In a week's time, Ollie was forced to further reduce his offer to 405 lucre, which fanned the widow's indignation into a fury. The widow Pincini canceled the sale of the work of art and presented it to the state, which gratefully accepted it. Henri left the neighborhood as unobtrusively as possible, and was genuinely relieved when his business commands took him to the capital, where he hoped that his identity and that of the famous picture might be lost. The proprietor of the steam bath emphatically refused to allow the celebrated fall of Icarus to be publicly on view without permission of the authorities. Public interest and official vigilance increased. 
The authorities conceived the idea that salt water might be injurious to the masterpiece. A perpetual injunction was obtained which barred Ali from sea bathing under any circumstances. Altogether, he was fervently thankful when his employers found him a new range of activities outside the country. His thankfulness, however, was short-lived. An imposing array of official force barred his departure, and he was sternly reminded of the stringent law which forbids the exportation of works of art. Ladies and gentlemen, the government granted to a German art expert permission to inspect the famous masterpiece. He declared it was not an authentic Pincini, but rather the work of some pupil. He deemed the evidence of Henri on the subject worthless. An Italian art expert proclaimed the work's greatness, and Henri was the storm center of furious controversy. It was not surprising he was adopted into the ranks of some anarchists. Four times he was escorted to the border as a dangerous and undesirable foreigner, but he was always brought back because of the fall of Icarus. Henri bore on his back the burden of a dead man's genius. He was a national treasure. A vial of corrosive liquid was splashed over Henri's back. The Icarus was ruined beyond recognition. As soon as he was able to leave the hospital, Henri was put across the frontier as an undesirable alien. In the quieter streets, especially in the neighborhood of the Ministry of Fine Arts, you may sometimes meet a depressed, anxious-looking man, who, if you pass him the time of day, will answer you with a slight accent. He nurses the illusion that he is one of the lost arms of the Venus de Milo, and hopes that the government may be persuaded to buy him. On all other subjects, I believe he is tolerably sane. <laughs> <laughs> it's a perfect night, she's waiting for me. It's a perfect world if you can only imagine. It's a radio blaring and a life within. Wind is drift and lifting up the trees like a graceful chin against the sky. Thank you.